Okay guys, it's super dark because it is 6 a.m. in the morning and it's still just dark outside. So I um, am here at the hangars that I'm supposed to be at. Um, I think I'm parked in the right spot. I honestly don't know. So I, I'm i going to call the nurse that I am shadowing today or at least text him and just let him know that I'm here. At this point, I started to make myself at home, put my food in the fridge, got into my flight suit and was fitted for it. Then I went over some safety checks with the flight RN just so I knew what I was doing, how to get in and out of the helicopter properly. And then we had quite a bit of downtime, so I actually asked the flight nurse if um, they had a station where they practiced intubation. So I learned the difference between a Mac and a Miller blade. Um, <laughs> I knew, learned how to choose tube sizes, um, what to look for. Um, and yeah, so then I just went ahead and started to practice um, intubation. So you guys, um, if you are someone who is a pro at intubation, please don't mind me. I'm just learning. <laughs> so it was good practice. Um, and yeah, it's really hard to see. I learned that I do like a Miller blade over a Mac blade. Apparently that might change in the future, but, uh, yeah, anyways, this is me attempting and successfully intubating a mannequin. At this point, the helicopter was up and ready to go, so I um, got my gear together and we got ready to fly. Hey guys, Carrie Botena, welcome back. I wanted to kind of follow up on all of the clips that you just previously saw and give you guys a little overall story of what happened, obviously keeping HIPAA in mind, keeping the privacy of the people that I shadowed in mind. Um, they give you guys a little bit of insight um, on what I saw. Obviously, I'm no expert in this field. I do have some critical care background, um, but I want to share my story um, from my flight observation from a perspective of basically being brand new, but knowing a little bit of what was going on. Hopefully that makes sense, but um, let's talk about it. So I got to the hangar, which is where the helicopter was, and basically the nurse that I shadowed does three twelves per week, just like we do in the hospital. And they used to do 24 hour shifts with like mandatory breaks in between. Um, but nowadays they only do 12 hour shifts. Now it might be different in some places, but um, in the place that I shadowed, they do 12 hour shifts. The flight crew is made up of the helicopter pilot, a flight registered nurse, and a flight paramedic. Now sometimes, and again it depends on the base that you're at and the um, healthcare network that you're in, um, they can do two RNs but or an RN and a paramedic, but they don't ever typically do two paramedics. That way they just have skills from both. So I followed a pilot, <laughs> nurse, and a paramedic. And I had such a blast doing it. So I got there, I didn't really know what to expect. I had a little bit of an idea because I know some people who do flight nursing. The main reason I wanted to do it was one, to see if I got sick in a helicopter because I'd never run in one before. And two, in case it was something I would later on be compassionate about. I've taken the time to shadow educators, nurse practitioners, and CRNAs this year. And I wanted to also include a flight nurse because um, as always, I'm looking to see if there's something different I could do with my career or if I want to stay in the place that I'm currently in. But um, there's no way that I can know what I want to do next unless I shadow and research and look into. And this is one of the ways that I've been doing that. So all that being said, I got to the hangar. I got to see the flight crew. They did a handoff report with the flight crew from overnight. Obviously, there was no patients to hand over. However, they did have to cover things like um, what kind of stock they needed to um, get, what supplies had been used overnight that we would probably need more of during the day at some point or needed to order supplies. They did a narcotic check together just to make sure um, everything was squared away. And then the pilot for the daytime came up and gave us a report on what the weather looked like, um, what our safety risks were, and about how long it would take for the helicopter maintenance to be completed. 
So while the maintenance was being completed, we did have some downtime. And so the flight nurse was able to help me get fitted to a flight suit and a helmet. A lot of flight nursing um, includes a lot of safety checks, obviously for the safety of the crew and for the safety of patients flying with them. There are a lot of risks involved. And obviously if you go through a program, um, there's a lot more that you would learn in terms of safety and how to get out of certain situations. So the flight RN basically went over the basics with me, showed me how to get out of the helicopter and in case of an emergency, showed me where some of the supplies were in the helicopter. He also showed me um, where to stand in terms of if we had to go to a crash scene or a traumatic scene or something like that. Um, when we're carrying the patient back to the helicopter, there's three different zones, which you guys saw in one of the clips. There's the green zone where the helicopter pilot can see you, the yellow zone where it's harder to see, and the red zone where there's no sight at all. So when you're bringing the patient in, there might be paramed other paramedics with you, firefighters, policemen, um, you know, maybe a loved one's coming to say goodbye or something like that. And so when you bring the patient on board, the pilot has to count every single head that goes back to the back of the helicopter. That way, when we get ready to fly, he can count and make sure that only the crew is left and that he doesn't take off and nobody gets hurt. Another thing that I learned was how to tell direction. So the nose of the helicopter was considered 12 o'clock and then um, everything around it in a clockwise direction. Um, would be ways that we would spot either other planes, um, persons, um, or even birds in the air. So if the pilot hadn't seen something, the rest of the crew will actually call out what's in the air so that the pilot has time to make a decision or move and just be aware of the surroundings. So that was part of our responsibility and I was able to call out a couple things. Um, I saw some paragliders in the air um, and when we were going over a more busy air zone, um, I was able to see um, a helicopter in another plane that the pilot was actively looking for because the calm of their head um, gave him like an idea that there were planes in the area. So we finally, at around noon, had the helicopter up and it was done being um, worked on. And we had two calls that day. I won't get super detailed, but um, it was just a really thrilling experience. If you guys have ever been a part of a rapid response team or seen one, you know that in a hospital setting, we have a rapid response team, which is usually made up of critical care nurses and maybe even a doctor who all come to the bedside of a patient who's rapidly declining in order to try and intervene before they code. Um, it could be things from a patient's having a seizure, a patient um, might be in cardiac arrest, a patient might be in respiratory arrest, a patient might be having an anaphylactic reaction, or it could be um, that they're attended because they got too many narcotics and things like that. So in my mind, I felt like following the flight crew was like being on a rapid response all day. You get there and you kind of figure out what's going on as you're getting there. You might get a little bit of report um, on your way to the scene or to the hospital that you're getting a patient from, but you really don't find out more until you get there and you talk to a nurse or a paramedic. Um, and from there, you can kind of start to make decisions. You have to think quickly, be on your feet, critically think, and then get the patient ready for transport and transport them to their next destination. So overall, I had a really great experience. Um, if the flight nurse ever watches this video, um, thank you so much for such a great experience, for being patient with me, for answering dozens of my questions. Um, I will be honest, I was definitely a bit of a deer in the headlights at the beginning because it's my greatest fear to get in the way of other people's jobs. So I just tried to really focus on making sure I was just getting in and out of my helicopter seat properly and open the doors properly um, and not causing anyone else harm or being in the way. Uh, but as the day went on, I felt more comfortable helping the crew actually like transfer patients, um, wiping down their equipment, helping them um, get things, hold things, you know, um, and stuff like that. So it was just such a great experience. I hope to do it again one day, but yeah, for those of you who are maybe considering it, this is just kind of like an objective view of what it's like. Um, I'm sure there's lots of videos out there that are more subjective from a flight nurse's perspective, um, that you can watch. And yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and got a little insight. And if you love videos like this or want me to do more in the future, 
Um, I definitely have one where I've shadowed an anesthesiologist that I'll link down below. But if you like them, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so I can keep up this content. Thank you all for joining me here. Um, I hope to see you in the next video. Tutuanana, I'll see you later. Thank you.